Happy New Year, guys. Isn't it just amazing and wonderful to see a new year? We are all in good health and are still breathing, right? It is a grace that you should never take it for granted, right? So being our first uh, video on YouTube this year, Molimul will want to wish you guys all the best that this life can give this year. And in our first session on YouTube, this year, we are going to start with a very important concept in financial management, which is portfolio analysis. Remember earlier on, I had uh, done uh, some several concepts on portfolio analysis, so it is a continuation of the same concept. So, the question that we are going to do today is a very interesting question under portfolio analysis. This question was attested uh, last sitting, that is a CASNEB paper, Financial Management Intermediate Level, December 2022, question number 2B. I'm going to attract the whole of the question immediately after, uh, just below this, actually just below this video, you'll get a link, a download link for the past paper of financial management last sitting, CASNEB. Remember, financial management is a universal, it's a universal uh, unit. So regardless of the course that you're doing and it has financial management, this video is very important for you. This video is very important for you. This question had a very interesting uh, concepts, which I know probably some of the students were like, now, what are these things that you're doing? Molim is going to sort it out today. So this is a question that uh, I want us to handle. This is a question that Molim will want to handle. I've shared it on the screen. As I've said again, you can still download this past paper. I've attached the link on the description below. You can download this question so that you can have it, so that you can have it. So let's go through this question. I believe that is very visible on our end. This is what you are told. The following information relates to Security X and Security Y returns for the year 2021, where in this case I'm given probability for, uh, probability for, uh, for these securities, return of Securities X, and return for security Y. Then look at the required. The examiner wanted us to determine expected returns for security X and security Y, determine the standard deviation for each security, determine the covariance between security X and security Y. Then I'm also told here to determine the correlation coefficient between security X and security Y. And you're given how many marks? Those are 12 good marks. These are marks that can take us places we've never been before, right? So, uh, I want us to handle this question. I want us to handle this question, my good students, and you'll see how easy, how easy the concept was. You can download the question for follow-up. Better still, I'm going to have this question here, just at the corner there, which I believe is also visible on our end. So, where are we going to start from on such a question? In this case, you'll find that uh, we are seeing some question marks in our questions, right? What are those questions marks for? The examiner wanted you to think extra uh, kind of, uh, maybe you, you are supposed to think uh, at an, uh, out, outside the box completely on that question. So we're going to start with, these are what you're given. Um, for probability, right? I'm having a probability point. had told us. The examiner has given us here, which ideally you can see it on the paper, this is what you are told, that return for security y is equal to 6 plus 0 0.2 return of security x. Yeah, that is what I was given. So, and check the question on return of security x, return of security y. Return of security y, you are given 12, 10, 9, then question mark, question mark. 
what has what was the intention of this examiner what was the intention of this examiner this is what i want us to see how the examiner kind of uh, it was a very simple concept that you needed to find the trend right so like the first case a good examiner here has given us for return of security y a good examiner has given us 12. how did they arrive at the 12. he had demonstrated for us there he has told us that for us to arrive at 12 uh, for at uh, uh, that figure that you're given these are what you're given i'm having the six plus 0 0.2 return of security x which is that so that in that case we have arrived by taking 0 0.2 by 30 plus 6 which would give us 12 right and that's how they have arrived at that so that is to say also the other item here would be having 6 plus 0 0.2 times 20 which would give us 0 0.2 times 20 plus 6 in this case i should be having what 10. the other item i'm having 6 plus 0. Point, uh this was a zero this was a what this was a 0. 0.2 right times what 15 here to give us what 0. 0.2 times 15 plus 6 to give us 9. Up to that point, that is how they have arrived at that. And the other case is giving us question marks, surely. Yeah? Was in this examiner very good? So I'll just be having 6 plus 0 0.2 times 10. And the other one I'll be having 6 plus 0 0.2 times negative 50 to give us our return of security Y. So I'm having 0 0.2 times 10 plus 6 this should give us 8 then uh, of course uh, 0 0.2 times negative 50 times or rather plus 6 right plus 6 that should give us what minus 4 so we have determined our returns for security y the whole of return for security for security y that was the first task that we were required to do. Let us go to the let us go to the let us go to the to the to the required here. Required the good examiner here wanted us to determine the expected returns for security X and security Y. I know, I'm very sure. If you watched the first video, determining expected return, that will be very easy. Expected return. Expected return expected return this will be very easy because all i need to recall is that i need to have my return times my probability then i do what i do the summation of that that will be very 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 easy and i'm expecting all of you guys to have gotten that correctly like the first case here to determine the expected return of security so i need to determine expected return of expect return of security x how will you go about it that would be very easy because i'll be taking 30 right by 0 0.1 we add 20 by 0 0.2 we add 15 by 0 0.4 we add 10 by 0 0.2. I know this is easy and most of you will have gotten this correctly. Minus 50 times 0 0.1. Then for expected return of security Y, I'll be having 12 by 0 0.1. We add, of course, 10 by 0 0.2 we add of course 9 by 0 0.4 we add 8 by 0 0.2 lastly we add minus 4 by 0 0.1 
I know most of you will have gotten this correctly. I need your answers, guys. Work it out quickly. Work it out quickly. Mm -hmm. So that if you work it out, what will you be having? What will you be having? Molim will take his calculator. We start with the first one, 30. Yeah? By 0 0.1, we add 20 by 0 0.2. We add... 15 by 0 0.4 we add 10 by 0 0.2 we add minus 50 by 0 0.1 this should give us what i'm having 10 kindly confirm your answers please i'm getting 10 and the other one that should give us what if we sum it up correctly Mm -hmm. In this case, I'm getting 8. Kindly, you can confirm with your figures. Confirm with your figures. These are the expected returns that Molimo is getting. These are the expected figures that Molimo is getting. Kindly, you can confirm. So, very confidently here, I can come and say expected return of X is basically 10, what you've gotten there. So, I'm having 10. Right? And this one, I'm having what? I'm having 8. So, I'll be having 8 here. And basically, that's what you're required to do, just imagine. Just like that on the first bit. On the first bit, we are required to determine that. What was the second question? The second question here, my good student, the second question, determine the standard deviation for each security. Determine the standard deviation for each security, for each security, for each security. I know when we are talking of standard deviation, the first thing that will always come at the back of our mind is what? Is variance. So, number two, the examiner wanted us to determine our standard deviation here. The examiner wanted us to determine our standard deviation, our standard deviation. And you know very well that any time you're doing your standard deviation basically is one of the measure of risks. And to determine our standard deviation, we must always have in mind what the variance. And this variance, what are you supposed to do with the variance? We need to determine the square root of the variance. The next big question will be, how then will we determine our variance? Recall to determine our variance, basically, we normally tend to take our return, actual return, minus expected returns. We square that one. After we squared, we multiply by my probability. That will give us our variance. So in other words, after you sum them up, then you need to do what you need to determine the sum. First, it as if we can agree and say that my standard deviation is as simple as saying we need to determine our return minus actual return. We square this one times probability. Then I incorporate what? Our square root. Then we incorporate our square root. That is, a, that is what you're talking about now as our standard deviation. So, after that, look at this case. I need us to determine, remember this is minus 4. Right? I need us to determine our standard deviation of security X. We need to determine standard deviation of security X. That will be simple now. Yeah? That will be simple now. How are we going to go about it? This will be simple, my good students. My return of security X, the first line is 30. I'm going to take 30. Minus expected return, which you have determined here to be 10. I square this one, right? Then I multiply by my probability, which is 0 0.1. The other one, I'm going to have, what, 20 minus 10. I square that one by 0 0.2 probability. The third one, I'm having 15 minus 10. I square that one by 0 0.4. Then the other one, I'm having here, which is 10 minus 10. I square that one by 0 0.2. This one, even if you don't tell me the answer, I know is what? I know is 0. 10 minus 10 is 0, right? So the other one I'm having, of course, 
minus 50 minus 10 we square by 0 0.1 so basically what will we be having on this i need solution from you guys which by the way even if you don't give molimu molimu a seasonal calculator so this is what we're going to do i'm going to take here 30 minus 10 i square that one by 0 0.1 in the first case, I'm getting 40. So I'm going to have my 40 here. The other one, I'm having 20 minus 10. I square that one uh, times 0 0.2. I'm going to have my 20. Then the other one, I'm having 15 minus 10. I square this one, uh, of course, times 0 0.4. In this case, I'm going to get a figure of 10. Uh -huh. I'm having a series. Then minus 50 here, minus 10. I square this one times 0 0.1. I'm going to have 360. After 360, what I need to do is to get the summation of that. So getting the summation of this, I'm going to have uh, 360 plus 10 plus 20 plus 40 i'm having a figure of 430 and recall this is not my answer this is a variance my interest is standard deviation so what are we going to do i need to square root that variance so square root answer square root my answer i'm going to get 20.74 confidently we'll be having 20.74 as our standard deviation of security x. Aha! Uh -huh. That's what you're supposed to do in the first bit. I know the second one you can do for Molimu, but because Molimu is doing this question, is, is the first video of this year, Molimu is going to do it for us. How are we going to work it out? We need to determine the standard deviation of security y. That will be easy because now I'm having 12 minus expected return of security y was 8. We square times 0 0.1. I'm having the other one which is 10 minus 8 square by 0 0.2. I'm having 9 minus 8. We square by 0 0.2. So this one, even if you're not going to tell me, I know this one will give us 0 0.4. Because this is 1, right? Then the other one I'm having, which one? 8 minus 8, we square times 0 0.2. This one, even if you're not going to tell me, I know this one will give us 0. Yeah? Then lastly, I'm having minus 4 minus 8. I square this one by... 0. Point, uh, that should give us 0. 0.1. So I'm having 0. 0.1. So at that point, what would we be having? I need the solution for the other two. That should give us 12 minus, uh, of course, that is 12 minus 8 squared times 0. 0.1. This should give me 1.6. 1.6. Then I'm having uh, 10 minus 8, we square, times 0 0.2, this should give us 0 0.8. Then I'm having here minus 4, minus 8 squared, times 0 0.1, this should give us 14.4. So if I determine the summation of that, plus 0 0.4, plus 0 0.8, plus 1.6, I'm going to have what? 17.2. 17.2, that is not our answer. We need to do what? We need to square root. So if we square root this answer, what can we get? If we square root my answer, we can agree that our standard deviation of security y, therefore, will be 4.15. 4.15. Very confidently, I'm going to have it at that point. Uh-huh. Is it flowing? Are you guys getting something? So once you're done with that, we proceed 
Once you're done with that, we proceed. Uh, we see what else do this examiner wanted us to determine. In our question here, the next item that the examiner wanted us to do was what? Was to determine the covariance between security X and security Y. Look at uh, number three. Determine the covariance between security X and security Y. How will we go about that? That will be very easy because we need to determine what? Our covariance. And recall any time you're talking of covariance, basically you're looking at the differences, right? So number three, we need to determine our covariance between security X and Y. So, ideally, the whole of this item, my good students, will find that covariance, basically, we are looking covariance of X and Y. Basically, it's just a difference between our two securities. And that is how, this is how we are going to determine that. I'm going to take, first of all, our actual return of security X. Return of security X. We are going to less our expected return of security x okay mark that very well then on that case you are going to multiply by our next security is y so return of security y minus expected return of security y then all of this i should not forget to multiply by what our probability so times probability then after that you need to do what you need to determine to get the, the summation you need to, to get the summation so it will be more enjoyable if you do it practically right so how are we going to go about it here look at this case and concentrate very well concentrate very well i'm having two securities we start with the first line of security uh, of return x of security x which will start and the good thing is that we had already determined that line here. So I'm going to have my 30 minus our 10 there. On this, I'm going to multiply by the first line of security Y, which was 12, minus expected return, which was 8. I had already determined it here. Then all of this now, we need to multiply by probability of that line, which is 0 0.1. I believe you've got in the concept how it flows. So the other one I just be having now quickly, 20 minus 10. We multiply by, uh, that is of course, uh, uh, 10 minus 8. Mm -hmm. So all of this I need to multiply by 0 0.2. Then the other one I'm having of course, 15 minus 10. times 9 minus 8 is the third line. 9 minus 8. All of this you multiply by the probability of the third line, which is what? 0 0.4. 0 0.4. Right? The fourth line I'm having here, 10 minus 10 times 8 minus 8. All of this you multiply by probability, which is what? 0 0.2. 0 0.2. Then uh, lastly, I'm having minus 50. The last line, minus 10. We multiply by minus 4, minus 8. Yeah. By probability, which is 0 0.1. 0 0.1. So having that case, my good students, I know you can now do for Mwalimu that one. That will be very easy. I'll pick my calculator. We start doing it together. 30 minus 10 times 12 minus 8 times probability 0 0.1, which in this case should give us what? 8. That's what I'm getting. The other one I'm having 20 minus 10, right? Times 10 minus 8 
times 0 0.2, which should give me 4. Uh-huh. 15 minus 10. We multiply. 9 minus 8 times 0 0.4, which should give us 2. Uh-huh. This one, of course, should give us 0 because 0, 0, right? Then I'm having, lastly, minus 50 minus 10. Mm -hmm. We multiply this one, minus 4 minus 8 by 0 0.1. I'm getting 72 here. So what will we be having as our covariance if we do the summation of that? That should give us 72 plus 2 plus 4 plus 8, which in this case would give us what? 86. So I'm having our covariance here to be 86. Our covariance there is 86. Covariance of x and y, I'm having 86. And that's what you're required to determine at that point. That's what you're required to determine at that point. Uh-huh. The next item, what are we required to do here? The last item, these are what you are required to do. Determine the correlation coefficient between security X and security Y. How do this item relate? Do we have a positive relationship, negative relationship, or no relationship at all? And if it is that, is it strong or weak? So this is what we are supposed to do. Coefficient, correlation coefficient, that's all the examiner wanted us to determine. Correlation coefficient. So part four, the examiner wanted us to determine correlation coefficient. Correlation coefficient. And remember, correlation coefficient for finance is somehow different with the one in management accounting. So how will you determine our correlation coefficient here? To determine our correlation coefficient, my good students, correlation coefficient of security X and security Y, I'll need to have this item, which my good students, you must always tend to have this. I'll be having the covariance of security X and security Y because that is what we are looking at. We divide by the standard deviation of the two security, standard deviation of y and standard deviation of what? Of x. So, as at the end of the day, the good thing is that already we have determined our covariance of x and y. Covariance of x and y is 86. The question is, do we have the standard deviation for these two securities? Of course, you have the standard deviation, which in this case I'm having what? 20.74. Standard deviation of y times standard deviation, or these are x times standard deviation of y, 4.15. So at that point, what will be our cover, what will be our coefficient correlation of x and y? How do they relate with each other? If one positive relationship, strong relationship, if negative one, if negative 1, recall we are talking of a negative, that is a, of course a strong negative relationship. And if it is 0, we don't have any relationship at all, at all, at all. So in our case, what will we be having? What is the relationship of these two? 20.74 times 4.15, which is giving us 86.071. So I'm having 86 divided by my answer. I'm getting 0 0.9999, so 0 0.999, which basically is equivalent to 1. So ideally at this point, as much as you're not asked, you can see that there's a very strong positive relationship between these two securities. There's a very positive, strong relationship between these two securities. So... This is what we are required to do in this question, my good students. And clearly, we can see that having done this question, it has covered now everything in portfolio.
it has covered everything in portfolio except for a standard deviation of what of the portfolio which ideally i did with you guys the other time so at this point some of the changes that Molimo was saying that we'll be having you notice that there are some of the units which are the same which are common worldwide if you go to zimbabwe if you go to rwanda if you go to south africa if you go to europe if you go to us if you go to whichever country these concepts are the same that is financial management financial reporting management accounting all these concepts are the same all over so what we'll be doing this year some of the new things are if you're watching this video and you're not in kenya probably or you're in kenya and that you're doing another course you can always share with us some of the questions that you do have we'll filter the questions and we'll be doing these questions and share with you guys and also the beauty part of it is that those students who are doing acca those students who are doing acca from this semester we'll be starting the classes for acca more so the aspect of uh, skilled applied knowledge and uh, that is of course uh, the fundamentals that is uh, from uh, I will be doing basically F1, we'll be doing F2, we'll be doing F3, we'll be doing F5, and we'll be doing F9. If at all you need an assistance on the papers that I've mentioned, kindly right now you can hit that number, make sure that you've reached us out and we will assist you guys. Being the first video this year also, I also wish to invite you guys to our classes which will commence actually officially probably from next week where we have two packages. We have the first package is the one that you can control your own timetable. Study at your own time. If you want to wake up at now at 3, p 3 a.m., if you want to wake up at 2 a.m., that is upon you. You'll study at the comfort of your own place and time, which basically, that's our first package. The second package is now the one that you attend classes according to our timetable, according to M. Darasa timetable, according to M. Darasa timetable. So guys, you can take that chance. And uh, of course, uh, if at all you want to familiarize yourself with our platform, just go to any browser and have app.mdarasa.co.ke or alternatively if you go if you can just search mdarasa then on mdarasa look at where we have web application then click that link web application click the link web application and you'll be redirected on app.mdarasa.co.ke create your account there scroll and see some of the courses that you're offering there could be some of the courses which will really really help you we'll be having more courses that will be adding more so the management courses and also practical training courses to this point guys thank you so much welcome to 2023 and i believe this year is our year right this year is our year this year is our year Nice time and uh, see you in our next class. Thank you.